The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the June 5th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, when I were going to go check on the circumstance of these markets, we'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call at 877-927-6648. But if you've got a question that you can't call in, I've got your back. All you need to do is send me an email. Send it out to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a slightly mixed bag out there in the indices. That means the Dow's off 26 points. The other indices trading the upside. 30 points for the S&P, 239 for the NASDAQ, 15 for the Russell, 159 to 3% for the semis. Trading's up 67. And our gold trade up 24 bucks. Silver, 26 pennies. Light speed crude is back 11 cents. Natural gas is up 11 pennies. 30-year treasury print out 119.03. That's up a half a point. If we take a look at what's moving to the upside, Asimil Holdings, a $73 move, MicroStrategy, $52, Broadcom, $48, Supermicro, $43, Lamb Research, $40. Those are some nice, healthy moves out there. To the downside, we're led by Madrigal Pharmaceuticals, off $18, 7%, followed by Mercado Libre, down $14, less than 1%. Nice limited, not so nice today, off 5%, $7 and change. Snowflake down $6 and change, about 5% as well. And Northrop Grumman printed out a 442. It's about a 1 and 4 tenths percent move to the downside. Uh, if you take a look at the sectors inside the S&P 500, they're not having a party. They're totally mixed out there. So we've got a, mix, a truly mixed bag out here. We take a look at the S&P and its sectors. Nonetheless, let's try to figure out where things are headed to. Uh, let's take a look at this chart here. Then we'll go switch over and take a look at my other daily charts out there. But the thing that I wanted to point out to you here is both in the NQ and the ES Mini. Now, we'll be rolling over next week into the uh, September contract. Um, but what, And we're looking at the June contract right now. But And this profile won't be confirmed until quite frankly, Sunday evening. But it does seem pretty solid at this point. Those are the green lines that we're taking a look at. I just caught the very end of Basil's show. What I heard from Basil's show was he was calling for a consolidation. Well, Basil, what I can share with you is uh, at your back on that call are these weekly profiles for the ES Mini, for the S&P 500, and for the NASDAQ 100. Now, that doesn't mean that price can't take them out. But these profiles, those green bars, wrap around the prior green bars, and that says prepare for a consolidation. Now, maybe that signal will change inside the NQ if we're to close above the top of that profile, 19023, or you can see these profile levels change. But at the moment, we go with the data that we have, and that's what's important to take a look at here. Now, with regard to the ES Mini, it's got a TD9 count top, Rhodes Mintum indicator top around the 5349 level. But again, the top of that weekly profile resistance, not much higher, 5368. Inside the NQ, it would negate and sell the D point top if it closed above 18,980. But again, resistance is at 19,023 out here. We take a look at the Dow equity future contract. No new profile there. Price remains above the top of its daily profile. Its next price target, I would say, would be 39,139. That would be the center of the weekly profile. 
And in the case of the Russell 2000, Russell 2000 is still trading below the bottom of its daily profile. But the key level here to watch is the weekly profile. And that bottom's at 2027.62. So that's what, in essence, is going on from a daily standpoint, a little bit of a weekly standpoint, as long as we're on this set of charts out here. Let's take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. It's advanced decline oscillator. Excuse me, still remains below the zero threshold level. That's really the panel number two from the bottom. That red line is the zero threshold level. What's that mean, Stevie? It says when prices are below here that sellers are the one with the advantage. However, that gets offset by the spot volatility, which is trading below its 50-day exponential moving average. And so that's why we're not uh, seeing any kind of the New York Stock Exchange advanced client oscillator, not really seeing it take hold out there. And with regard to the spot volatility index, trading below yesterday's low, that's a bullish signal, which suggests the rally should continue. But we're going to switch over and take a look at those intraday charts for the ES Mini to try to figure out what they're communicating to you and I. So let's go do that now. Nice smooth transition there. At least I thought it was. And if we take a look at we've already talked about the daily, so you and I don't need to go there. What are the odds that price is going to hit 53.49? Really good unless we see some topping patterns inside the intraday charts out there. There was a daily because you have price above that green house and change line, a bullish condition, above an area where some sellers resided at the 53.22 area. So 53.49 seems very likely. Now, if we look at the five-hour time frame chart here for the ES Mini, we've got an A to B equals CD pattern that is underway. Let's go ahead and draw that in. Now, price at this moment, this candle, by the way, doesn't complete until 2 p.m. So even though price is trading above its TD9 count breakdown resistance level 53.31 and a quarter, doesn't mean that it's going to close above that at 2 p.m. But it's still a number to have on your pad of paper because if price does close above it at 2 p.m., it increases the odds of this A to B equals CD pattern that we're going to throw in there. So there's the A to B point. Let's copy and paste this, move this over. We go to the lowest low after that B point's established. So the one to one would take us up to 53.54. My recollection is that on that uh, 53.68 is the top of that weekly profile. We can see also here on a five minute time frame chart, the real resistance level on it is up at the high from nine in the morning back on the trading day of May 23rd, and that high is at 53.68.25 level. That's not only resistance on the five-hour chart, that is the weekly top of that new profile. Oh, my goodness, what the heck happened? That is attempting to form. So 53.31 is a key level. There's no other topping signal here inside of the ES for its five-hour time frame. On a four-hour time frame, its resistance level is 53.37.25. Now, there's no topping signal out there, but getting back to resistance level can be a top. So you watch that as price gets up there. Watch price behavior on those intraday charts. 120-minute chart, also in full-out bullish mode out there. Confirms what we just looked at on the five-hour. Same is true for the 60-minute. The 30-minute chart negated a TD9 count top. This TD9 count top completed at 9.30 this morning. We're now trading above that level. Did we close above that? Let's see. That high was... 53.2850, close on the last bar, 53.29, absolutely. So that pattern has been negated. Don't see any other topping signals out here. So really, it's about the 240, getting back to that resistance level, 53.37 and a quarter. I would have to say at this stage of the game, odds favor that that is going to fail out there. That says we get back to at least the 53.49-ish area out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. There were a couple of requests that came in late yesterday. I love as many as I can get today. Just kind of keeps my focus on the charts and not my throat, which would be a good thing. But we'll take a look at, because I don't remember where we left off, Platinum, BMY, ARWR, ZROZ. We'll look at the GDX again in high-grade copper. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the, the platinum charts out here. I do not recall who made that request yesterday. I apologize for that. I didn't write that down. Excuse me for a moment. We can see there's an A to B pattern, A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Now, price has actually hit its support level. So it's got a buy zone here. The buy zone is between 994, 30, and 1,660 out there. So it has successfully gotten that area. What you'd love to see here, <coughs> what you'd love to see here is a bullish reversal candle to confirm a Gartley buy pattern out there. You're not likely to get that today, but that would be an ideal pattern to receive to get out there. <coughs> My apology, folks. I'll do the best I can. <coughs> mm. Mm. Okay. Five hour time frame chart's got a TD9 count bottom. That remains in effect unless price closes below. So this would be an area to truly watch here. <coughs> Yikes. Would be 992.50. So if you see a close below 992.50 on a five hour time frame, these bars, by the way, this next bar that we're in here closes at, um, at uh, 2 p.m. <clears throat> so you can kind of grade the five hour bars in essence by that. I don't see a, I see also TD9 count bottom on the four hour time frame chart. Rhodes meant indicator bottom. It's trying to form on the uh, two hour chart. Same thing for the 60-minute. So the key here, I would say, look at this set of charts. Is their price able to close above 1,250? Odds favor, in fact, that you do have a bottom in place, regardless of the lack of that bullish reversal candle on the daily time frame. If instead, oh yeah, just stop talking. I hear you. See, if we get that five-hour time frame TD9 count bottom, if that gets negated, and really if you get a close below 989.50, there is a new weekly profile. 
that has formed. And the resist or the support level there is between 925.50 and 945.40. So to the upside, I'd see a close above 1,250. That suggests that, okay, we may have that bottom. You get a close below that TD9 count bottom. That call is likely off, and we start heading to the 925.50 type area out there. So I hope that helps out the individual who is looking for platinum. Johnny, want to take a look at Brister Mile Squib. I think we did get through this, but very quick order yesterday. So we'll pull those charts up momentarily. Just want to go ahead and close those out, just free up some resources. So we'll get back to BMY. <clears throat> All right. So now we take a look at Brister Mile Squibs out here. Um, what does this have? So this has a TD9 count bottom. And that says, okay to take a long position, but if price were to close below the low of that pattern, which is 39.94, that says get out of Dodge out there. If you take a look at uh, what it's doing on a daily time frame, it sure looked like as of yesterday that you were in full breakout mode because price had closed above the top of that daily profile for two consecutive sessions. We're back inside it now. Its buy zone is between 40.26 and 40.61. So if you're looking to take a long trade here, or you are, I guess you already are long. So, um, and so I, I see where you're long at. I don't know where your stop is, is, is at, but I would say that your stop should be below that TD9 count bottom pattern, which is at the 39.94 level. So maybe that'll help you out. The weekly chart looks very nice. You're going to complete a TD9 count bottom pattern this week. You'd like to see price eventually get above that red oscillator and chain sign at 42.99. It's the monthly chart that's the one that's the real, um, uh, problem it's a problem because it doesn't have a bottom pattern and it's trading below prior swing point lows for example the prior swing point that i'm referring to out here johnny takes us back into july of 2019 and the low there was 42.48 we closed below now let's see the swing point there had volume of 304 million you came into it with 298 last week was 317 while you blew away that swing point with volume. So the monthly chart, Johnny, is telling you that this wants to get to that 3250 level out there. Um, I mean, that would be its next price target out there. So watch the daily and the weekly out there. Uh, the bottom of that TD9 count pattern, the weekly, uh, depending maybe your longer term uh, view on this, a close below 3991 would negate that signal as well. So that's what we see when we take a look at B M. Y out there, and I hope that that uh, helps you out. Let's take a look at uh, ARWR. That's for Bob in Spokane. And uh, <clears throat> okay, so ARWR has really been trading. I'm going to open up the daily time frame chart. So that's just the screen that we're looking at here. And I have no idea what I said about this yesterday. Um, but I'm hoping what I said was this thing is trading into sideways consolidation. Or at least that's a pattern that sticks out to me when I take a look at it. And we'll go ahead and draw that pattern in here. The, the high of the consolidation is pretty easy to go ahead and put in here. It's somewhere right around there. And the lows are pretty easy as well. So there's your consolidation pattern. Now you're up towards the top of that. You're up towards the resistance level. No idea whether that's going to hold or not. It's moving into a swing point from back on May 22nd. That swing had 634,000 shares. Yesterday you closed inside it with 1.2 million. When you close inside a swing point with volume, odds favor you're going to test that high. So the high of that level is up at 2609. If you close above 2609, the next area of resistance will be 2748. And if you can clear the 2748 level, then you get to that uh, consolidation breakout measured move, which would get you up into the uh, 2980 area. So that's what the daily chart is telling us. The weekly chart says I'm trading inside a bullish structured weekly profile. It has been unable to close above the center of that profile. So this is the key number for you to be watching, Bob, come Friday. A price closed above 2488. And preferably, you'd like to see it close above that little swing point from a couple weeks ago. That number out there was that 2609 area. So if price closed above 2609, what ARWR is telling us chart-wise is that it wants to head up to the 3069 level. Kind of takes us in towards where I believe that measured move on the daily time frame was. The monthly chart just has a consolidation with insider profiles. So that's what I see when we take a look at Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals out there. Todd wanted to take a look at ticker symbol ZR. OZ. So let's pull that up on our screen out here. ZROZ. 
is a 25-year uh, zero-coupon treasury index, PIMCO fund out here. So this has generated an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Let's go ahead and draw that pattern in. A to B, pretty easy to, oops, shoot. Uh, A to B is pretty easy to do, uh, except uh, Stevie screwed that up, so apparently not that easy. Here's A to B. I'm just going to move that over to the C point so we can come up with a at least an initial price projection, which can get you up towards the 77.35 level. Now, the nice thing about this, as we speak right now, is you're on the left side of that uh, A of that C to D leg. So what this really suggests to you and I is that, uh, Todd, is that this should do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. Regardless of that last statement, which is an accurate statement, once you get above the one-to-one -one area, the first bearish reversal candle that you uh, would uh, that this uh, stock chart would generate would become your sell the D point pattern out there. So it looks like it wants to head up to that 77, 78 area, top of the weekly profile. No reason for it to not get to 78.56, and the top of the monthly 81.14. So right now, those are what the charts for Z Raz are telling Stevie. Steve Rhodes with TFNN will be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tigers Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. 
They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's take a look at the GDX. Uh, yesterday, uh, both Hector and Mary Jo wanted to take a look at this. The question is, is there an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside? The answer is yes. It confirmed that pattern yesterday. The swing point that it passed was from the trading day of May 23rd. That swing point had volume of 32 million shares. Yesterday, this generated volume of 32 million shares. So the same type of volume. So we've got a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Would take us below the TD9 count breakout level of 33.74. So that pattern is certainly into play. However, is it possible that actually yesterday was really the bottom inside the GDX? And the answer to that question is also yes. And the reason is because we know about the directional correlation between the GDX and gold. The other reason why I can say potentially yes is because what happened on the weekly time frame is price pulled back and thus far for the week has tested and rejected that oscillator and change line at 34.20. So even though, and this does not have a topping pattern on the weekly time frame, there's actually an A to B equals CD pattern. The swing point had volume of, of uh, 180 million shares and it was passed with 114 million shares. And 124 million shares. Nonetheless, even though it was passed with lighter volume, the test of testing support, which was the oscillator and change line, at least at this stage of the game, has been successful. And there is no top on the monthly time frame. The reason that we could have formed a bottom yesterday was simply because of gold's price action. Now, maybe it's just a short-term bottom. What I mean by that, let me just move over to this set of charts. Do I have it up? I don't. Okay, so let me go over to the black background screen. I'll pull up the gold chart there, and I'll just have to remember, please remember, Stevie, go back to the other set of charts out there. So we'll take a look at gold here. We'll open this up. And so yesterday what price did was it got down and it tested the bottom of that daily profile, 2342. So we know about a directional correlation. Now, it's probably hard for you to see, but if you look at just the numbers on the very right-hand panel of my screen, the ones that are highlighted in blue are matching the blue lines for those profile levels. So you can see the bottoms at 2342.10, the center at 2356.70, the top at 2386 out there. Now, this profile did form below the prior profile. So in the prior profile, it formed within the, within its prior profile, which suggested a consolidation. I think we're still in that consolidation type mode, but 2386 is going to be a key level there. It's very possible gold will get up there. It'll find resistance. It'll turn back down. It'll head back towards the 2342 level. And then if that happens, then that GDX trade, well, then that A to B equals CD pattern to the downside could, in fact, resume itself. But at this stage, if price closed above 2386, I would say that's not the case out there. So those are the things that we'll need to watch in order to be able to help monitor that GDX trade, uh, just simply because of its directional correlation. All right, so let's go back to the other set of charts out there, and let's take a look at high-grade copper. We started speaking about that yesterday, and there was a question about some follow-ups to take a look at that. And the follow-up was also is then now because I referred to a TD9 count bottom. And so the follow-up was is it time to go ahead into SCCO? So that's a great question out there. So let's first get to the high-grade copper charts so we can re-review exactly where we're at. But more importantly, do we have any kind of a signals of a potential change in trend on the intraday chart? So here we take a look at the daily time frame. You'll see this also has an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Price is likely not going to get down there because you've got that TD9 count pattern that's going to complete today. Whatever today's low is, though, that's going to be the key level to watch. Right now at the moment for the daily copper chart, this is the July contract. It's at 4.5185. If price were to close below that, not today, tomorrow, the next day, whenever, that pattern would get negated. Now, I'm assuming that's a low for the day. So don't quote me on that. That's low for the day as of 1134 in the morning. But whatever the low of the day is, if price closes below that, it negates that signal. Of course, the A to B equals CD pattern is still in play, and you'd be looking for a bullish reversal candle there. But you've got price that's forming a daily bottom pattern, while on a weekly chart, price is testing an oscillator and change line. So again, that remains bullish out there. So now to the lower intraday charts. Really, we just start with the 30-minute chart. 
So let's simply open this up, take a look at high-grade copper, see what we can see out here. Now, what I don't see is any kind of a clear bottom pattern. Maybe we could draw an A to B equals CD pattern in there. I don't know. What we do have, though, is we do have an attempt of a profile change in trend. We have a close above the top of the profile. On that last 30-minute bar, uh, we had this next one that closed at noon. We're trading above that. Now, what you'd really be watching here is you'd be watching the top of its new profile. And that's at $4.57, $4.5795 to be exact to the tick out there. And the price were to close above that, well, at least on a 30-minute basis, you've got profile change in trend and a suggestion that we continue to move higher. If we take a look at the 60-minute chart out here, 60-minute chart, again, same type of thing, other than me searching for some type of A to B equals CD pattern, price is now trading above the top of its daily profile. And that's at 4.557. So at 12 noon, 24 minutes from now, if price closed above 4.5577, odds favor, it's signaling to you and I, wants to attempt a profile change in trend. Well, if it does that, what's its next target? That's all the way up at $4.69. So that would be a nice, healthy rally out there. 120-minute time frame chart has a confirmed Rosemont indicator bottom. This tells you and I that price should go target $4.60. 460 is the top of that 120-minute profile. 459 is the top of the 240 minute profile and the same for the five hour. So ultimately, if in fact high grade copper has bottom, you'll see closes above four dollars and sixty cents. Doesn't have to be today, but that's what I would be looking for out there. So now the question, what about SCCO? Well, let's go. We'll go take a look at those charts. But before we do that, let's go take a look at the correlation chart between high grade copper and SCCO. And that's going to be in this chart. The top portion is high-grade copper. The bottom portion, or the center portion, is uh, southern copper. Now, in the case of southern copper, it has already formed the one-to-one -one A to B equals C D pattern to downside. The bars below, now this is set to a five-day average. And over the course of a five-day average, price is very directional. The bars are above zero. You see some bars below zero, but the majority of the bars are above zero. Tells us about a directional correlation. What SCCO needs to generate for you and I in order to confirm a bottom would be some type of bullish reversal candle. Now, in the case of SCCO, if the move is just a counter trend move to the upside, price would find resistance at 114.34. So that gives us a clue because even if we don't get that bullish reversal candle and if price were to close above the uh, one uh, 14.34 level, that would be a pretty decent indication that this has formed a bottom as well. Now let's go flip back to the uh, white background charts, and we'll take a look at SCCO, see if it's got any kind of a bottom signal. I don't really recall whether it does or it doesn't. We know we've got a TD9 count bottom when we take a look at high-grade copper. But I don't know if SCCO has that same set of patterns out there, but because that directional correlation, just like we looked at with regard to gold, and the GDX, now we didn't show you that correlation out there, not, not, not for any reason other than I just didn't set it up, but we've looked at that many, many, many times out here. Now here's SCCO. We see the TD9 count top, we see price trading below its breakout level, below profile support. Again, it needs that bullish reversal candle out there. The weekly time frame chart, suspect, we're back inside his profile out there. The monthly chart, actually this month, course of month we're so new into it but you could form a sell the d point pattern so is it time to get into sceo i'd say at least wait for high grade copper to close by that 260 level we'll be right back if you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey you've no doubt come across many folks who push forex trading as a way to make big money quickly Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Let's go take a look at ticker symbol UNFI. Um, anybody watch the... Uh the longest day in golf a couple days ago, the guys that were trying to uh, get a spot into the U.S. Open. Now, so I think, um, what's his name, uh, Scott? Uh, Adam Scott? That, yeah, I think it's Adam Scott, right? Uh, uh, in order to get into a playoff, which he ended up losing the playoff, he had to uh, sink this nice chip. It was, it was pretty amazing. It's amazing how good those guys are. It, it truly is. In any event, uh, I know the reason I bring him up is because that's his big logo. Maybe his only logo or primary logo. Um I think that's it, Unify, which is a United Natural Foods. So we take a look at United Natural, and maybe yeah, that's not his logo, and Stevie just simply, yeah, we'll just chalk that up to a well. But if we take a look at Unify out here, or Unify, uh, United Foods, looks very good on the daily time frame out here. I don't see any kind of a topping pattern. In fact, it had a TD9 count top that is being negated today. It does have this Rosemont Dominicator signal that's been triggered, and that would require some type of bearish reversal candle to confirm a top out there. But otherwise, this should continue to add higher. The daily time frame, so the question is on this chart here, is that an A to B equals CD pattern that is formed? Was there enough of a retracement on that B to C leg? And I'm going to answer that for us on my other screen out there. Was there enough of a retracement at 0.382? And I'm referring to this retracement right here that moves back down to the May 29th low out there. And that's just a 23% retracement. So we're not going to go with the A to B equals CD pattern. We at least wanted to get towards that 0.382. Its next price target to the upside, 1605. 1605 would also be the next price target on the weekly chart. That assumes that it closes the week above 1253. We're trading at 1352 right now. This did form a nice TD9 count bottom on the weekly time frame. Now you're getting a profile change in trend. 1605, Dan, really seems to be the uh, target. The only thing that gets in the way is now the monthly chart. And so the monthly chart, you have profile resistance that's sitting at 1443. At 1667, basically, is where that oscillator and change line is. So 1443 to 1605 is uh, where this is likely headed to. And those are the charts for UNFI, so I hope that that helps you out. Uh, Marvin wrote in, and Marvin wanted to take a look at the RGLD, Royal Gold out there. You're welcome. So let's go see what RGLD is doing out here. It is trading with insight, so it is going to form... 
It could form a TD9 count bottom pattern today. But in order to do that, it actually has to trade a bit lower. It needs to close below 127.82. So Marvin, the first level to be watching is at 127.82 level. If price closes above that, the TD9 count pattern that you were asking about will vanish, will go away because it will not have followed the rules out there. What else would we have? Well, it looks to me like yesterday may have been a Gartley buy pattern. Let's go see if it completed that A to B equals CD pattern out here. So here's A, a to B. I'm just going to move that over to the highest high after that B point. So that's easy for us to identify. I'm going to try to move it. All right, um, there we go. Let's see, I should move this. So, you know, here's here's kind of the issue. So on this pattern, the A to B equals CD, and it's an estimate, but it's a pretty close estimate here. Uh, it gives you a price target around 124.60. And yesterday's low, it's nice. Uh, well, actually, I would say yesterday would not be a buy of the D point pattern. Maybe we, we didn't cover that. It was also a gap to the downside. So I see the falling window and I see the hammer candle. If I go ahead and I fill in that uh, window, this would no longer be a bullish hammer candle. So I don't think we've got to buy the D point pattern. Right now, what you've got is a consolidation with inside its profile. That range, 126.11, could be up to 134.56. How about on the monthly time frame chart? The monthly time frame chart, price is pulled back. It's tested and rejected that green oscillator and change line, and it's trading above profile. So what that tells us, as long as price here, Marvin, can remain above 127.94, it ought to make a run for the 129.87 level. You're asking, is there a bottom signal? I think you've got to wait till the end of the day to see where RGLD uh, closes, because if it does close below the close of the bar from uh, back on May 30th, then you would have a bottom pattern out there. On the monthly chart, things look fine. And when I say fine, I mean, price is trading above resistance, which is the top of the profile out there. So that's what I see, Marvin, we take a look at RGLD. LB wants to take a look at ticker symbol NXE. Let's pull up those charts. And NXE right now is trading at about $7.35 in between its daily profile levels. The daily profiles, this, by the way, is next-gen energy. The daily profile or support areas at 724. The resistance up at 833. You're asking about buy points. Well, that uh, bottom, that profile, has been tested a few times out there. So that could be a entry point. I don't have a bottom pattern associated with that, but that could be an entry point. It was tested and rejected yesterday. If I look at the weekly time frame chart, we have a Rhodesman indicator top with a consolidation with inside its profile. That would say a buy point would be 714. So you got two different buy point areas, 714 to 724. The monthly chart, as I see a wave seven, I see a TD nine count, I see a Rhodes momentum indicator top. It hit the uh, trifecta out there. Now, just because it hit the trifecta doesn't mean that it's going to crash or something like that. It just means that price is getting back to support. Well, it's already done that. It got back to that oscillator and change line last week. It did it again this week. That says that that number is a real key level to watch the downside because we're talking about 714 to 724. If price were to close below 727 on a monthly basis, that would tell you that this wants to head lower. And lower here would be 680 to 529. So you've got a – actually, you've got a top on the daily, Rhodes Mentum Indicator top on the daily. Same thing on the weekly. Consolidations going with inside those profiles. And so what I – and with no bottom signals, but you can – get a can be a bottom just simply pulling back to support out there so those are the areas that i'd be watching of uh, lb and i hope that that helps you out hector wanted to also take a look at aem so we take a look at a nico eagle out here uh and i apologize hector i didn't write down your answer your question what was it it was uh we know you don't like your students getting loose with details that's that. I love your sense of humor out there. So that's a beauty. Um, yesterday, however, we got the ninja gloves on and caught a falling knife. Okay. So the week of April is a great volume considering over. All right. So let's just uh, let's take a look at the charts. See if we can help Hector and Patty out and give them a, at least a Stevie view. So the Stevie view shows on the daily time frame. First shows a B point from back on May 23rd. Had volume there of. Um, 2.7 million, taken out with volume of 3.2 million. So that sets up the A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. We'll draw that in there. At least we'll draw the A to B point. We'll try to move this over to the C point out there. And looks like that would be right here. 
So it has, it also has not attained the exact price projection level out there. What price has done, though, after generating that road momentum indicator top, was it has pulled back and it hasn't looked like it was going to break through some key support levels yesterday. <coughs> Only one day below those levels. We're back above it today. So yesterday may have been a false breakdown. How about on the weekly chart? And we're really seeing, I think we might have covered this with um, RGLD. Maybe it was the same pattern inside of Goldie, the GDX out there. Weekly time frame chart. Price pulling back and testing the oscillator and change line. If this area doesn't hold, this area is at 65.65. <coughs> then I'd say, Hector and Patty, we could be looking to move to the 61.29 level. The monthly chart, too early into the month. But you do have the completed 1 to 1A to B equals CD. If you were to get a bearish reversal candle, that would confirm a sell that you go back. D point pattern. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. So uh, let me, Hector, to answer your question with regard to what do I think about the fact that you went long yesterday inside of Ignico Ego, I think all that is okay if you get too close to those 65.18 out there. <coughs> On a daily basis, you need to be careful. But you have to also put this in context of what's going on inside of the uh, gold contract, which we've already covered, quite frankly. Uh, you had mentioned the U.S. dollar index. If we pull up the charts here for the euro, the yen, and the pound with regard to it, in the case of the uh, euro out here, um, 
you know, it's got an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. That remains in effect, likely going to hit the 109, 1.0942 level. That is unless price closes below the oscillator and change on its testing right now, 1.0859. If it closes below that, it's likely to get weaker. It's likely to target at least the low from May the 30th. If it were to get below that, that would head even lower out there. The dollar would get higher. In the case of the yen, um, the yen out here is an A to B equals CD pad on the upside, but that has uh, been sidetracked right now with price getting below that oscillator and change line. The Great British Pound does have a sell the D point pattern. It formed that yesterday with that dark cloud cover, but that oscillator and change line is holding as support out here. Uh, so this, in fact, may head higher, but the, it's got that sell the D point pattern. If it closes below that oscillator and change line, it will get weaker. The dollar would get stronger out there. So. I think you're looking at the potential of the opposite. We got to pay attention to these three currency pairs. Um, it really helps. It helps me out more so than it does take like a profile levels in the daily U.S. dollar index and so forth. Let's get to that last request. So I hope that helps you out. Last request was to take a look at uh, the emerging markets ETF EEM. This is for GTE. And GTE, this has a successful TD9 count bottom. That completed yesterday. It's trading with inside its profile. It's trading into a sell zone. The sell zone for the EEM is between the range of 42.26 and 42.67 out there. On a, a weekly time frame chart, uh, things look okay as long as price remains above 42.07 there. And the monthly chart looks okay, but it's got resistance at 42.79. You'd ideally like to see that level fail. Well, folks, we made it through another one. Sorry for coughing into your ear several times out there. Uh, but I would love you to have a wonderful Wednesday. And I'll look forward to being back with you on Terrific Thursday. Take care, folks.